Well, good afternoon. It's the afternoon of Friday, 17th of May, 2019. And uh, as you can see, I'm still in Newcastle and having just come out of the uh, court here at the Moot Hall, Gateshead Council were effectively seeking to jail Mark Steele for breach of the injunction, i.e. for causing harassment, alarm and distress amongst uh, the councillors and officers of Gateshead Council. Now the case ran till five o'clock yesterday, so Judge Kramer decided that he would make his ruling this afternoon at two o'clock. So here is the summary of the ruling. Basically there were six points raised by Gateshead Council, so they had identified six communications between Mark and uh, various people uh, who either work or are elected to Gateshead Council and um, uh, basically they were claiming that every one of these six was a breach of the injunction. Well, I won't bore you with all the detail, but uh, basically it's got off to a really good point. He wasn't satisfied that it was a breach. Uh, the third point, no breach. But um, then we got on to points four, five and six. And the judge was, you know, clearly wanting to uh, probably acknowledge that, um, you know, Mark had a case, that his concerns were genuine. And uh, although obviously the issues of 5G were not uh, part of the hearing because, he, you know, this was a hearing that was restricted to whether or not Mark breached the injunction. And is, as is always the case in this situation, the reasons behind Mark's passion were not necessarily relevant to the hearing, but Mark did really well in getting the key points out during the course of his evidence yesterday. However, basically the judge has endorsed the observations of uh, Judge Nolan at the original hearing. And that is that, you know, Mark received his education in diplomacy from the Attila the Hun school of, um, of diplomats. And uh, so, you know, obviously coupled with uh, being from a part of the country where, you know, one uh, regards a spade as very much a spade. But uh, uh, basically he's saying that, yeah, you went a bit over the top. Calling people a liar um, is not acceptable. And the reality is that, you know, you really need to be using uh, language that's a little bit more diplomatic. But, um, you know, to cut a long story short, because, you know, there's a lot of detail here, but uh, the judge eventually decreed that Mark should be fined. Bear in mind, the Gateshead Council were looking to get Mark jailed. He decreed that Mark should be fined £250, suspended for two years. And then when Gateshead Council were seeking costs and the costs that they were seeking amounted to £3,100, I think they were going to go for a lot more, but it became pretty clear to them that the uh, judge wasn't up for that. And uh, so they backed down to about £3,100, well, to £3,100. And um, I mean, the judge didn't quite say this, but uh, he might as well have done. Um, uh, he basically said, well, good luck with that because uh, I'm not going to award costs, especially as no costs schedule has been provided. So, um, you know, basically, yeah, you can submit an application for costs. I'll take a look at it. But uh, the bottom line is that the likelihood of you getting it is uh, slim to none. So, you know, this is a really good day. No doubt, obviously, Gateshead Council are going to claim that it's a victory for them because they did get uh, three of their points accepted and obviously that's where the suspended fine. I've never heard of a suspended fine before, so that's a new one on me. But, uh, you know, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And the bottom line is that once again, the genie is out of the bottle. So even though, you know, um, Gateshead Council would have loved to have heard, had this uh, hearing uh, in secret, the public gallery was rammed yesterday. And even though people knew it was only going to be probably a one hour hearing this afternoon as the judge delivered his verdict, then basically the public gallery was once again packed. And uh, <clears throat> surprise, surprise, there wasn't a single mainstream reporter in the court. So you're not going to hear or read 
anything about this from the lamestream media. The only report coming out of uh, the court here in Newcastle is either what you're hearing now or what anybody else who was uh, present puts out a little bit later. So, you know, it's absolutely tremendous that uh, so many uh, people came up here and uh, Mark's pulled himself away from the uh, crowd. It's a bit windy here, Mark, so let's get a... Now, before you say anything, because I know, I know that you are going to want to say this is a victory, but let, we have to put it in perspective. We have to put it in perspective. It's a good result. It's a good result. But the judge has acknowledged that your diplomatic skills, which you learned at the Attila the Hun School of Diplomacy, <laughs> need to be reined in a bit. So, I, I mean, absolutely. I mean, the judge was brilliant. I think the judge, um, you know, he took on board everything that you said yesterday. He acknowledged your passion. He acknowledged that it's something that, um, you know, you feel very strongly about. And I think he also acknowledged that it was quite remarkable that Gateshead Council didn't actually offer any evidence to suggest that you were wrong. Well, I don't, I don't think they have trouble with that, Ian, because they know that I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a, it's a problem. It's a, this is a serious problem for them because obviously there's a humanitarian crime that, that came in here. And I think the judge could see that he saw uh, some evidence about the hardware in comparison to what a real life controller looks like. It's pretty obvious. Ian seen the imagery, uh, absolutely unbelievable. So in, in one respect, yes, it was, it was a result, but in another respect, we are fighting for the right to free speech. What we don't want is these fascists in local authorities who abuse the law, abuse the process of the law to either through these injunctions or other, where really, I mean, if we'd been here today and it was in a jury, they would have threw it out. They wouldn't even took it to court because a jury would have just sought for what it was, uh, a word, somebody makes a telephone conversation. There was nothing in record on Nolan QC's uh, uh, summing up or other Recorder Nolan QC stated in a court in front of a number of witnesses. Okay, but what you have to remember is that that ruling is now no longer relevant. Yeah. Anything that uh, Judge Nolan said no longer has any legal bearing because this supersedes anything that, uh, that Nolan put out there. So now we have to move forward from the, the Nolan case to this case. And basically he was pretty much in, in slightly less poignant language but he was basically saying the same thing. He said he wasn't going to gag you. Yes. You know, but what he was reiterating was that, you know, basically it's not appropriate to call people liars, even if they are, that uh, there is an appropriate uh, British decorum that needs to be uh, adopted. But nonetheless, there are ways in which we can get the message across. But the, and, and our challenge now is actually to get the communities, because one of the things that, you know, I'm going to point out, is that communities are starting to really take off on this in Wales, in the south of England. But here in the northeast, the problem is that you're seen as the figurehead. You're, and so people go, well, I don't need to do anything because exactly. Mark Steele's got it. Truly agree with you. And then yeah. what we have to yeah. do now is we have to build those community groups so that instead of you being you know, targeted by Gateshead Council because you're the one on point, what it needs is people throughout this community to actually recognise that through the cases that Mark has taken to court, he has effectively been proven to be absolutely correct in his concerns. And I saw somebody earlier question the validity of this uh, case because it's not listed, etc., etc. I mean, this is tired, <laughs> tired, you know, rhetoric. <laughs> and let me just give you the case number. The case number was E01NE627. It's a civil case bought by Gateshead Council. It was a committal hearing. I mean, there was, there, I mean, they made it clear they were seeking to get you jailed. They were seeking to get me sent to prison. That was, they, they, their rule there was to try and get me sent to prison. They were saying that I'd, I'd used uh, threats of violence. Uh, I mean, this, sending somebody, I mean, yes, uh, section three of the criminal justice system, that's the law as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I'm not a lawyer. But I would suggest that sending anybody, you know, if you suggest uh, to anybody uh, about a law or a legal process and they get upset by that, I can only suggest that they're a criminal. You know, they're possibly worried yeah, about right. the... Uh... Yeah, but Mark, this is what gets you into trouble. 
you know, it, it, it is your, uh, well, you're Fourth from right. Newcastle, your, your <laughs> forthrightness. And, and uh, you know, this is where, it, it, why, why it's so necessary now to build a community where people, you know, have the, uh, if you like, the, the skills to be able to challenge the council without there being a target for them to come back to. Yes. I to shut you down. You know, so basically it's got, there's got to be a 5G LED street lighting awareness group emerging in the northeast. Absolutely. That can take over the mantle that Mark has uh, set here. You know, Mark's forte is really taking his uh, observations, his experience, his knowledge around the country or even further afield and, and stimulating community groups because no one person, like fracking, no one person is going to stop it. It's only when communities come together and hold their elected representatives to account that you actually get traction. I want to totally agree with you in there. You know, this, this isn't about me. This is about 5G and how authorities are abusing the law. This technology is not safe. It's in breach of the Nuremberg Code. The LED streetlights that have been rolled out on top of us are absolutely lethal. And I mean that. Even Public Health England uh, and AMA, ANZIS and SHIA, the Emerging Risk Group, have said that these LED streetlights are, are risky to children now. How come your local authorities spend more? The risk. The latest study that came out of Barcelona, 20 institutions are involved in that research. It was published by Exeter University, shows a doubling in breast and prostate cancer from exposure to prostate. 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 <laughs> prostate. prostate. Cancer. Yeah, it's a Jody accent, you see. Yeah. Good job, you chat to keep, keep us right. <laughs> so, prostate cancer and that's only after three years exposure and the horrifying issue there, the potential epidemic is 15 to 20 year out. So this is, this is an agenda and how come we've allowed local authorities to roll this technology out? It's totally experimental, being untested. They'll state it's, it, it, it fits with BSI, it fits with European standards. I can tell you now, it won't, it doesn't because of the pulsed wave frequency that they're emitting, it's more in the 450 nanometers. These are blue, four, uh, blue phosphor coated LEDs. They are completely and utterly nothing like anything that's went before. So where fluorescent lights were a risk, you know, the orange lights, all artificial lights are risk. These are significantly higher risk. And what makes them really dangerous is the fact they've got no diffuser. That diffuser was taken off. The decision to take them out was in 2015. That then makes them extremely hazardous, especially to children. Now, it's a category two optical radiation emission device. You have to wear protective eyewear. Who's told anybody driving on motorways, w driving around in your city, people doing their lawful duty on a night time, you must wear protective eyewear. If not, it increases your risk of central nervous system cancers, prostate cancer, breast cancer. We know that. The science says that. How come that has happened? So if people are a bit confused about there's an agenda going on, I can tell you there's an agenda. They haven't done any risk assessment. They're in breach of parliamentary laws and acts. No risk assessment, uh, no environmental risk assessment, etc. So what I'm saying, and I agree with you totally, it's up to all of us to start that act, not down to me. I don't mind coming around, having a chat with people and, and trying to embolden people to, to, to act, but we must remember, I'm one man. It's up to others to start to get involved and, and grow our number. Now, the, the groups are emerging in the south of England <clears throat> and uh, certainly, you know, obviously in places like Sheffield as well, but, you know, um, it is for each and every community to pick up on this because your council has a constitution and you, in most cases you could download that constitution you know from the council's website the gateshead council constitution runs to some 286 pages but within that constitution it clearly spells out who in the council the officers and the councillors themselves who is responsible for the health safety and well-being of the residents you know and and you know it just may be that we have to get creative because basically Unless your councillors and their officers step up to the plate here and find a way to stop this technology being introduced in your community, then they are obviously complicit. 
but their hands are being tied because this is a significant national infrastructure project and the government, British government, has given the telecoms companies the opportunity just to literally site masts up to 75 feet in urban areas, 85 feet in rural areas, anywhere where they can get access to the land. And it's so important that communities get involved like they did at Totnes, where the community um, and the parents at a particular school uh, on, in Dartington protested because a phone mast had been sighted right alongside the school. And now I believe that the uh, telecom company has stated that it won't be turned on, but how do you know? You've got to hold these people to account. Go to download the Constitution, find in the Constitution who's responsible, and then point out tactfully, diplomatically, not like me, <laughs> but forcefully <laughs> that they are responsible for maintaining and upholding <clears throat> the uh, integrity of the health and the well being of people in their constituency. And maybe, Mark, maybe we need to start encouraging people to withhold payment of council tax. Now, that doesn't mean don't pay it. It means set up an escrow account so that you're still putting the money in an account, but that you are withholding. Let the council know that you are withholding that money on the basis that they are complicit in rolling out a carcinogenic technology. Yes, you, you must put them on notice just to be within the law. You put them on notice and tell them of the harm that's been uh, is, 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 is happening in the community from this technology. We have all the science that actually shows that as a matter of fact. So, and, and then you can then withhold that with, the, with all those funds. But <clears throat> one of the things I was going to say, and which came out in, in the court today, we are going on the offensive with legal action against these, uh, whether they be uh, authorities, whether they be individuals who are complicit in this crime. But you will be doing that in Gateshead. It needs communities all around the country to do it in their communities because, you know, as we've proven with fracking, you know, one, one judicial review, one injunction doesn't stop it. It has to be a constant attack so that the industry and the government have no idea where the next challenge is coming from. It needs communities to start talking to each other and, of course, you know, the pubs are being closed so that people have less and less opportunity to socialise in the evening if they have any time. But, uh, you know, you have to find ways to come together to get community activism established in your area. If you don't, then basically the prognosis is not pretty. It means that these 5G phone masts are going to start appearing on the top of lampposts, just as they've done in Gateshead, 35,875, whatever it is, 275, yep. around Gateshead. <laughs> and of course, this is technology that has been produced by a company that has now gone to in, into administration. So goodness knows what they're going to do for spares and repairs. So uh, somebody didn't do their due diligence there. <laughs> but this is why it's so important for people, just as we did with fracking, it's important for people in communities to take a look at what's occurring, what's being rolled out, ro rolled out, and then find a way, however you think, to challenge it effectively. And ultimately, ultimately, if we don't manage to stop it through the appropriate channels, then as far as I'm concerned, it would be absolutely legitimate to do whatever is required to prevent that technology from being switched on. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's incumbent on all of us. This is a humanitarian crime. The, the, the full deployment of this equipment, I'm suggesting it's going to be in and around the 2021. We have to act now. One of the things that we noticed the other day, somebody sent me an image of a, a, of a light sensor fitted to a, to a street light in, in London. Now, it was smaller in construction, didn't have the 868 transmitter. If it's that big, it's got a good chance to be the 5G. This one was about two inches high, clear plastic. However, it had been removed <clears throat> and you can see it's a very, very easily installed piece of equipment. So one of the things that we've noticed that putting these light sensors on now, because we've got to remember this tech, these people are extremely deceptive they, uh, and, and dishonest. So what they do, they fit these, what are in, a, in, a, in fact, light sensors only and then they come back a couple of weeks later and change in front of retro for a 5G yeah. piece of equipment. Yeah. And, the, and how you know that, the device will be fitted and it'll have uh, a high voltage connection 
So you have a look at the if you have a look at the the, the board, you see the high volt connection that can then be connected to a 5G system because the 5G system that we have in Gateshead has got a 450 volt capacitor. It only has one purpose to harm. It only has one purpose to harm. So all the things about what it's going to be, what it's how it's going to track, and all the rest of it. Yes, it may be able to be doing that, but I'll tell you now, it has one of that purpose. Okay. But, but for, for most people, Mark, to suggest that something is being deliberately erected to cause harm is a stretch too far. It absolutely you is. Know, and and in, reality, in reality, we don't actually need to go there because once people do their own research, and, and even, if, even if people want to believe that it's being done with benign intent, that it's being done purely to enable you know, a faster... Uh, connectivity and to obviously facilitate the Internet of Things, you only got to look at the evidence that increasing number of scientists are putting out there and this is a carcinogenic technology. So, you know, the Mark's, Mark alludes to the fact that it's being done deliberately as, um, as a uh, population control grid. Whether it is or it isn't, the reality is that it will cause cancer. That's the, that's the evidence, that's the proof pouring in now, particularly from the, uh, the US where this has been rolled out. And then, you know, Mark at AB10, uh, you presented the evidence to show that the switch on of 5G in Korea uh, in five cities led to outbreaks of mass fires. So, you know, something's not right with this, uh, with this technology. So, as is always the case, you know, don't take anything that we say at face value. Do your own research. And uh, particularly, you know, the research of Martin Paul, who is very much on point in trying to raise awareness of the dangers of this technology. And as Mark says, you know, for the LED streetlights, you really don't need to look any further than the combined uh, efforts of Exeter University in the southwest of England, working with the uh, Institute for Global Health uh, based in Barcelona, and you look at the reports that they have put out and the evidence that shows the uh, negative health impacts of, of this lighting on communities. So, you know, it's all to play for. Mark, coming back to today, um, you know, the judge found that there was reasonable cause that three of the claims of breach of injunction were effectively proven, but um, uh, he slapped you with the massive fine of £250 and then suspended it for two years. Which was a fantastic result. Spell me was a, a real a real issue. That's what the council wanted. They were demanded my, uh, you know, my liberty be taken uh, for speaking out once again. Uh, it didn't happen. But if they had of, I think they would have shot themselves in the foot. Well, and, um, and I'm here, um, you know, they got... A 250 pound fine but where it where it became almost farcical was when gateshead council was seeking uh costs and the judge said oh, basically he might as well have said good luck with that <laughs> uh, because you know he said well you know submit your claim and we'll see what happens but you know he he's basically telling gateshead council you know you've had your day in court yeah you've got three of these tenuous uh, um, allegations of breach found in your favor I find him 250 quid, now go away. That was, I mean, I've paraphrased obviously, but yeah. that was pretty much his stance. Yes, I think one of the things, obviously, uh, I was a bit uh, slightly disappointed, the fact that, you know, I was encouraged in the last case by recorder Nolan as the case uh, unfurled, but, you know, we've got to take it on face value what happened today. It was a result, but you've got to remember, these fascists at the local authorities are basically trying to take away your freedom of speech. You know, a telephone call, an email, there was no threats at all in any, no specific threats in any of the emails, me on the phone, I'm not one for swearing, yes, I suppose if I did say a liar, which... You might have done once or twice, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, stating that somebody's a liar when they've lied to you, right, how can that be abuse? That's like when a burglar comes through your window and you go, hey, you're a burglar, and he gets upset and gets you arrested. It's a good job that... Uh, we haven't got uh, injunctions against them from burglars because that'll be the next one. Uh, yeah, but injunction. you've got to remember this is a Labour council, and uh, basically I think there's about there's about a dozen Lib Dems or something, but the rest are all Labours, and they're basically snowflakes. That's you snowflakes. know, the moment that you say anything that uh, they don't agree with, 
you have offended them. And I mean, we've seen either from the tweet I posted out yesterday, I mean, all the police vehicles here, well, they don't have police now, they have LGBT police. And, uh, you know, the police are driving around in pink vans. You know, this Newcastle, sadly, looks as though it's uh, for embracing the, um, the snowflake era. I think there could potentially be a test, a test bed there, uh, Ian. I mean, obviously a test bed for 5G and we'll see what's going on in Gateshead. Um, I mean, it's like, you know, the, uh, Roddy, Roddy the, uh, the solicitor, did actually burst into tears in the stand. You know, and I mean, what I'd actually said, I sent him an email. I sent him an email with some uh, text to the British uh, judicial system, uh, some legal uh, uh, claim about the, uh, the 1967 Act, Section 3, and he burst into tears. Well, Mark, I think there's way too much oestrogen in the water. So, Mark, <laughs> it's been a... Fantastic, Ian. It's fantastic, Ian. Ian's been fantastic, by the way. I mean, what a star this man is. He's gonna. I'm gonna. I'm definitely gonna adopt him as a Geordie. <laughs> right, no, no, not until you do something about the water here. I tell you. <laughs> anyway, shit, my boobs are growing as I speak. Right, okay, I'm out of here. Uh, Mark, it's been an amazing uh, couple of days, and uh, you're on the case. Brilliant. Yeah, and. Um, <laughs> we'll have another discussion about diplomacy yeah, later. Can I have a photo we used to? <laughs> can I have a photo we used to? Ah, yeah. I'm glad to do the diplomacy. I'm honest, I'm just uh, Hang on a second. Well. So I'm just going to sign off. You guys have a great weekend. It's, uh, I'm sure there, there might be a, a beer or two for those who drink um, you know, in a little while. And I'll be back with you on Monday morning at uh, 8.30. You take care now.